Child, the stuff keeps going. Here we go. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corn. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Okay, I feel like every day is an update. Okay, because every day Diddy done done something different that we have to discuss. Okay, and I ain't saying that man guilty. I'm also not saying innocent. But just because every day I feel like it's a news update. It's a Diddy update. And that's easy for me because we just keep discussing what needs to be discussed. Okay, now look, I hope first things first. Y'all can one hear me. Okay, and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Become a whole Jaybird, Jaybird. Don, don, da, and da. Okay, make sure to like the video. Make sure to share the video. You can also comment in the comment section because we are here to have a conversation. And if you ain't commenting, what you for? Okay, uh, we probably get to listen. You can listen. I get it. I get it. I get it. But sometimes a conversation is warranted about these things here. Now, it has been a busy day for me at work. And so I only said a couple of things. We may scroll the blogs and then see what happens there. Because I hope we can be here for just only an hour. And I'm happy that it's not much going on. Now, I know I was going to, I said yesterday that we would have a bishop robbery watch along, but I forgot <laughs> um to watch his live. I haven't downloaded it, but I have, I have a girl, girl come on stream. Hi y'all. How y'all doing? I look crazy. I feel like my hair because I was laying down, child the green the greens. The gray hair is popping out. Let me see this this the hair being covering my gray hair. And so it made me look younger. Okay. Um, but I can't see without my glasses. Where are my glasses? Um, Chavi's launch. The only thing I so this is my uh, a, a savage Fenty hoodie, and the only thing I it, it, it aggravates Chavi so long, y'all. Why these Rihanna? Rihanna, why do you have these so long? They don't need to be that long at all. Okay, and I feel like this. The hood is stretched out as much as it can go. And it's just that try to be in the way. Anyway. 
throw them over my shoulder to, to get them out of my face. Um, that's got what I was gonna say. But my point is, uh, I forgot about Bishop Robbery, basically. And because I'm off Friday, because Friday is good Friday, so I'm off work that day, we'll have a Bishop Robbery watch along of him going over all of the case stuff, his trial stuff and whatnot. We'll do that uh Friday. Um Friday around 5 or 6 p.m. Okay. Well, maybe I don't know. Whatever time the live step up. It is I won't be live at 9 p.m. Friday because I'm off work Friday. But that's what I forgot. So instead, um, because there's always something new to discuss, I said we can discuss this stuff right here. We can discuss this stuff right here. And I meant to go and kind of you know look at the blogs or whatever, but I did not get as much stuff as I wanted to. But again, this is the reason. We can be here for an hour. <laughs> that will help. Now, I did put up a little poll. I put a little poll. It's only 46 votes. So, look, when we, if you are watching, I think if you're on your phone, you may not be able to see the poll on your phone. I'm not sure. But I have a poll up. And the question I felt like asking was, is Diddy going to prison? Or Bali with Russell, you know, because Russell around there and Bali escaping from the authorities. And I said... Is, is he going to go over there? But Russell will sit down and shut up. Or will he end up going to prison? What is y'all thoughts? Put your little votes in on the thing. Okay. Now, let's just start it. <laughs> but happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So, today, so basically, tomorrow is my Friday because I'm off work on Friday. So I can't wait. Um, but hi to the people. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the live. Yesterday's lot. Look, so what I have, what I love that I'm doing now, I'm limiting myself. So I say an hour, <laughs> and an hour really means not two hours. I I'm trying my best to not have nothing be at two out two hours. So I've been I've been doing good, and we have not been going over two hours. I hope y'all like it. Because to me, an hour and a half, an hour, hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes, that's a good time for a live and stuff. When we have more time for a longer live, we'll do that. But I am able to maintain my sanity, you know, and get things done, giving y'all a good old hour, hour and a half, hour, 40 minutes or whatever, but under two hours. Okay, so I've been loving that. I've been loving it. Okay, but yes, please hit the like. Look, you, I, I know y'all, YouTube has been really funny. Yakin, it has been unsubscribing people to my channel, and I can see it. So please like the video because the more y'all like the video, maybe YouTube will stop being haters. Okay, but hi to everybody. I hope y'all had a great Wednesday because it's a thing to do. Just be great. Okay, not did it. You do air gets one child. You know, 2024, it's been a lot. It's been a whole lot. And I don't know why, okay? I, I feel like every, I feel like every year since the pandemic, you know, it's just been foolishness going on. And like, this is the first year where I feel like, you know, we are 95% pandemic free. Um, while I still feel like child put on your mask around a whole bunch of people and I don't like going to I don't like going to it's a flash no, I, I don't like going to events that is like enclosed with too many people. It's like no, if it's not outside with the breeze, I don't want to go. But 2024 came in like a wrecking ball and it hasn't stopped. Okay, it it, it hasn't stopped, and I don't know why. Because it's crazy. Okay. But hello to the people. We are here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Little tink tink. Um, yes, if you're on your phone, you may not be able to see it, but it's here. Okay. Um, hey, I really appreciate you because you're the only one of my regulars who was gracious enough to go. I'll be trying. I'll be trying. And even for me, sometimes I feel like because I don't like beating dead horses with, with old meat. You know what I'm saying? So for me, as long as something new comes up about Diddy, Portia, and them or whatever, we will come here and have a little discussion. And that way, it's not me trying to, you know, do a whole bunch after work. I got off work on time, got home, 
little side relief, and then we'll be done, you know what I'm saying, around 10.30-ish or whatever, and we good, okay? It was a little, a little hour, 49, it's not that bad. Not that bad, okay? We will do the thing to do. But hello to the people, okay? Now let me share my screen. Share my screen. Well, do I want to go to IG first? Because like, oh, because the IG stuff is the, is the bare minimum of what I want to discuss. Um, but I also feel like it's fine. Let me just add it on here because we're going, you know, we're going to chit chat a little bit, you know, but have a good time, have a conversation, read some folks for filth if need be. And then if not, we'll just go to the blogs. I want to start, but first of all, let's start here. Okay, let's start here. I feel like Draymond out here Draymonding, okay? Um, I cannot play the clip because it didn't get flagged. But, you know, Draymond Green, you know, ejected four minutes into the basketball game. I said, four minutes? What did he do? Now, to my knowledge, he didn't get, like, physical with anybody. It was just it was some, some trash talking that he was ejected from the game. I said, Draymond, out here just out here Draymonding. You know, he's a passionate person, but I'm like, sir, calm down. And the funny thing was seeing all the people around him trying to make sure he don't, he don't dream on. Because at this point, he's dream on, he dream on it, okay? Um, I also sometimes feel like he is a little bit, and I won't say picked on, but I do feel like people... People feel like he's aggressive. So any little thing he do, file, tech, you're out of here. But I feel like sometimes that means your mind is breathing on out, bro. Breathing on out. Because they want you to get pissed off. They want you to act a fool. And then out there, then I threw you out the game. And seeing Steph Curry, like, he like, what the f- is We only four minutes in. Okay? We only four minutes in. He needed something to calm down because they will put him out just because he's Draymond Green and he has a reputation. So sometimes we have to also know that and be like, you know what? I won't give you the satisfaction of putting me out. And I'm like, that's, that's not fair. Okay, that's not fair. Um, House of Villains, which I did not review season one. I don't think I'm going to review season two. I may peek at it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit because the cast... Uh, season one, which we know had Tanisha from Bad Girls Club, it has it had um it had uh New York, it had Amarosa and stuff in the peoples or whatever. So the season two cast has been revealed. Uh Camilla, who was on Bad Girls Club a long time ago, I think don't she be fussing with people all the time? I feel like she's one of the girls to be fussing with Nelly Nunn. Um, somebody named Jesse from Big Brother. I don't watch I cannot I cannot get into Big Brother. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know why, but I don't like it. Oh, wait, let me end the poll. I forgot to end the poll. End poll. Because not going keep running. I'm going to put up a new one eventually. Now, we're back on here. I'm going to get the screen. Um, yeah, I don't watch Big Brothers. I don't know the Big Brother people uh, at all. But, I mean, it's a white man without no shirt on. Um. Candy Muse, who was on RuPaul's Drag well, Candy Muse, I think, was on RuPaul's Drag Race and maybe one of the all-star shows. She kept losing it, but it, it's her. So she now she's a villain. Gets on my damn nerves. Okay. Uh Larissa from 90 Day Fiance. Sha, they need to do a before and after. Okay, let me, Larissa, when I when they said it was her, let's see, Larissa 90 Day Fiance. Right. When I, when they said her name, and I said, oh, now I want y'all, that's Larissa. I just want y'all to see, that's Larissa, when when Larissa and Cole, I think his name was Cole, when Larissa and Cole, Colt is Colt, when Larissa and Colt were on 90 Day Fiance, that's when I used to watch it. Okay, that was a few years ago or whatever. But the fact that that's how she looked coming on to the show. And now this is how she looked, you know, being on, you know, the I said, first of all, she, 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 she I don't know, girl, I just, her, her titties too big. Okay. Her titties are too big. Completely 
overpower. She don't tip over. Okay, but she on the show as well. Um, we then had Richard. I think it's Richard Hat from like season one of Survivor or whatever. Um, Safari from you know Nicki Minaj and Love Hip Hop fame. Um, we also that jacket looks real stiff. Real stiff. Um, Teresa, of course, from House from the Housewives of Jersey. Tiffany is back. I feel like the show realized how much of a missed opportunity it was having Tiffany on there longer. Because when she left, people were upset. You know what I'm saying? So she's back for season two. And then Victoria from The Bachelor. I, I don't watch The Bachelor, so I, I have no idea who she is. Um, and then Wes. Wes, y'all know I y'all know I watch the challenge. So I am I'm a fan of Wes. Sometimes Wes was active 18 back in the day, but you know, adult Wes is a business Wes. I like Wes now. Um, so I can see I can see Wes do I like Wes more than Johnny Banana, truth be told. Um, so that is the season two people. I did they did they talk about black and white at the same time? The black, white. I, I believe can't nothing candy is maybe them is, is she them I don't know. Um, you know, it's just child. Tiffany looks so different, y'all. Tiffany looks so different. Um, but I do feel like they're gonna probably try to have Tiffany on there for longer. Um, it was a cute little promotional thing as well. So I, I may look into the show. I cannot say I will review the show, but any crazy shit that Tiffany says, I will y'all will discuss. Um, so that's season two. I, I, John, first of all, also, I have to watch the Shanna Sharp interviewed Offset. Child, and Offset commented about Shanna Sharp. First of all, Shanna Sharp pants is tight. Okay. And this stance that Shanna Sharp is in is hilarious. But Offset trying to just show some brotherly love and some advice. And them tight pants, too. No, I can't do that. Yes, you, you got to, bro. I'm, no. I'm trying to tell you like a player. Not. I'm trying to tell you like a player. I ain't been letting them change me, man. It ain't about that, bro. It's just you big. I know. You big for that, bro. Nah, but see, you see, if I got on, if I got on big clothes, they might yeah, hey. I wear big clothes. But you, I got on these big cargos. Okay, these fit. But when I'm out doing stuff for, for my Laportier, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be comfortable. You can be comfortable in I want comfortable in that. I ain't uncomfortable in that. I'm yeah. comfortable in what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Social media. Social media. First of all, Austin is right. Okay, I think Austin's point was, sir, you round your leggings. You too big for some leggings. Okay, you can wear, you can wear, like, and I, Look, I fully understand Shannon's point. Like, when I'm around here out and about running my errands and running around what I got to do, I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be, in a, I don't want to be in a blue jeans. I don't want to be in nothing that fits my body. And offset point was, you don't have to be in big bag, whatever, but just don't be, not in the little ass pants. Are you on social media like that? I mean, I'm always watching, but I try to stop wearing them tight pants, too. No, I can't do that. Yes, you, you got to, bro. I'm, no, I'm trying to tell you like a player. I'm, I'm trying to tell you like a I player. ain't been letting them change me, man. It ain't about that, bro. It's just you big. I know. You too big for that. Bro. Nah, but see, you see. You too big for that, bro. I Because, you know, uh, Shannon is a is a muscular man. You know, he's tall. He's thick. And he round here in these leggings. And, it, you know, if Diddy invited you to the party, you got to say no. So if anybody offers you some leggings, you got to say no, Shannon. Okay? They got to say no. But, again, there are other pants he can wear that are not, like, legging material. And you can still be comfortable. But if you if you want leggings, then, I mean, I, I guess what are we going to do? But, I mean, sir, it looks different. First of all, Offset is hilarious. I th I think people don't, I think because Offset, you know, before in the Migos, it was always the Migos, but even the Migos were funny. You know what I'm saying? Um, but if anybody has watched Offset, like this is solo interviews, he's hilarious because he be dead ass. And that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And when you, when you, when you dead ass about stuff or whatever, and it comes off funny, you just like, I gotta be honest. You, you, you too big for them pants. No, no. You know, do it. You know what I'm so I feel like there is a difference between like why wear some throw some jogging pants or some cargo pants. But Shannon is out here in leggings. He's out here in leggings and a halter top. 
Okay, the shirt is above his 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 the shirt comes right below the belly button, you know, and it, it leaves nothing to the imagination, in my opinion. You know, um, but I, I do think it was funny that offset said, you know, you know, you because I mean all Shannon again is tall, muscular, and I just you know I, but I, I feel like it came from a loving place. Okay, you too big, man. If I got on if I got on big clothes, they might yeah, I would be clothes. But you I got on these big cargoes. Okay, these fit. But when I'm out doing stuff for, for my Laportier, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be comfortable. You can be comfortable in I'm uncomfortable. You in that. I ain't uncomfortable in that. I'm <laughs> comfortable in what I got. <laughs> it's cute they had a laugh. Okay. So that was just funny to me. Oh, oh ha happy birthday. Happy birthday, y'all. Happy 55th birthday. To, now, they said she's 55. I didn't say that. I, I read it on social media. I read it was it was Mariah Carey's 55th anniversary. Y'all know she don't say it's her birthday. It's her anniversary. So, happy 55th anniversary of her birth to Mariah Lee Carey. You know, Mariah looks amazingly well. But first of all, we have to also admit that, you know, in, in these years, you know, it's uh, like a lack in my eye. These years, 55, even 65, don't look how we looked back in the day. Like when my granddaddy or my grandparents were in their 60s, they looked like somebody's grandparents, you know. Uh, but nowadays, you know, people be, you know, my, my mom is 60 and she damn trying to look 60. So happy 55th anniversary birthday to Mariah D. Carey. And we wish her all the love and, and, and the celebration and happiness that, you know, she can muster. Okay. First of all, being on a boat in a glittery ass dress, I'm like, girl, now that's a, does, does Mariah, like, does Mariah own jogging pants? Like, does Mariah just, like she Mariah dress, like she's always like glamorous. It's just so amazingly funny, but also that's what it that's what it is. Um, because I remember, you know, back in back in my day, you know, Mariah Carey, you know, and the honey, you know, and it's just like honey when your love comes over me. You know what I'm saying? Back in those days, you know, it was just a different Mariah, but I still love her. Regardless, okay, she looks amazingly beautiful. Okay, um, I want because guys, oh, so it's, it's stuff I have. We're gonna go over it here in in the cities of the cities here in Michigan. Okay, massage parlor busted after therapist allegedly offered you know sexual acts for money to an undercover cop. I'm like, why? Look, y'all gotta. Vet y'all, y'all people's better. Can't just stop it. And massage parlor was busted after an employee allegedly offered sexual relations to the customers for money. Uh, during the past several months, East Point Police um received several complaints. First of all, who complaining? During the past several months, East Point Police Department received complaints regarding Bella. Touch massage parlor on 10 Mile and Grassy, not too far. And customers reported that they went to the parlor for a massage. But after completion of it, they were offered sexual relationship for money. Now I'm like, well, who was complaining? Just say no. First of all, no. <laughs> Just no. But I was like, who complained? Just say no, no, no thank you. Because I feel like if somebody's out here giving out happy endings, why, if you don't want one, just say no. Unless they physically, you know, touched you inappropriately and you had a happy ending accidentally and then they charged you anyway. I mean, then complain. If somebody, but, but again, it's hard. Look, look, the way that happy endings happen, you can't accidentally have one. You have to be engaged in it for it to happen. You know what I'm saying, um, because it takes a lot of touching, okay, a lot of touching, a lot of touching for an ending to end happily. So 
So I feel like if you go get a massage and they just say, hey, you want a little, you want a little special? You want a little special rub? I got some spe- I got some some special uh lotion. It's real, it's 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 cocoa oil, cocoa butter, Crisco, okay, whatever, some baby of the oil or whatever. I got some real special lotions to, to get it done. If you want a little special something, you know, for you know, if for the little low low. Yeah, I said, look, you got a little 40, little 40 dollar. You know what I'm saying? I can help you finish what you want to finish. Yeah, because you are. I, I see because I was rubbing on you. You was already around here growing at attention. So come on around here and let me finish it off or whatever. And then we can let it be that. Okay. But I'm like, the, the fact that folk went, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Shut up. Go to bed. Uh, I'm not gonna complain. The, 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 fun, the funny thing is, we have we have conversations about this all the time. Because you know, look, look, some people may want um an ending to be happy. You know what I'm saying? Some people want their drumstick, you know, worked out. Or or they 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 what they, they whatever. <laughs> <laughs> people want stuff to be done, okay? And if you don't want stuff to be done, just say no. But why are you out here snitching? Because not a folk who wanted it done can't get it done no more. Now, it's one thing if a, 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 a cop came in and then they accidentally asked, and you, okay, that you busted. But the fact that folk was like snitching, for several months, the East Point, because East Point, which is just, it's tries to skip a step away from Detroit. So this is, y'all, y'all, I, I can get, I can get there in five to seven minutes. I can, I can get to where it's say I should, y'all, thank God I ain't went. Anyway, because would I, would I be, y'all, y'all imagine if he's going to arrest it for being in a brothel. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, Again. They went and said, I got my massage, and once my massage was done, I was offered sexual relations for money, and that's what they were saying. And I was like, well, that's nobody's business. So on Tuesday, yesterday, the police department conducted an undercover operation. A detective went to the parlor and, and asked for a massage. And after completion of the massage, the massage therapist offered the detective to perform sexual acts on him. I was like, first of all, that was y'all problem. Y'all don't know how to look. Y'all, I, I, it's, it's something in my eye right now. This, I don't be, I don't be trying to teach people how to do things legal because that ain't what I do. I'm, I'm legal. Um, but I feel like if you're going to be out here offering a handy dandy a handy dandy um, finishes, know who to ask. You know what I'm saying? You should never ask a stranger who you ain't never seen before, like build up a rapport with somebody and then say, okay, boom, I, I know. Cause like know who you offering things. So you gotta be, you gotta be selective with stuff. Okay. You can't be, first of all, and I feel like they probably was offering jobs of the blow. Okay. It was probably offering listen, jobs of the blow round here sucking on uh drumsticks. I, look, first of all, don't be out here. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because you don't know what other caves that drumstick was put into. Okay? I'm a firm believer in, you, look, look, I'm a solo dolo. I don't, I don't want, I don't want no dirty drumstick. How do you know that man drumstick was even clean? How do you know it was clean? Okay. Did, how? Maybe the drum thing was dirty. And who can who, and, 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 if, and if it was and if it was uh you know for a drumstick going into a person's cave, okay, if the drumstick is going into the cave, right? Who got the condoms? Like, is the condoms there in the room?
it's just it's a lot to think about. Okay, it's a lot to think about. So once the worker offered the, the undercover the cop, you know, some 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 pleasure. Okay, the folks came in and said, "Oh, we we done." Okay. Now it says the charge there'll be charges against the owner and the workers. First of all, what if you a worker that would never offer an extra services? What if you was only offering massage? Because my thing is, I don't think every because look, when you have a business, everybody don't want to give out pooch and mouth. Okay, unless pimps got smart and said, take my hoes off the street, put them in a massage parlor. Okay, now unless this is the hoish massage parlor and all the holes is in there hoeing, you know, is my thing. Because I also would not want to go into a, a, a hoish massage parlor. I need somebody to really be around to give them massages. Because I first first of all, I don't want I do not want to come in and be on a table where fluids have been loose. Mm-mm. 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 And then do you have to be quiet? I mean, like, is it a silent finish? Because first of all, that's boring. I, just, okay, let's start thinking thing. Who wants to who wants to finish quietly? Okay. Is it a deaf black mute? No, thank you. Okay. And if you in the other room getting massage and you just chilling or whatever, and all of a sudden a gorilla is over there beating the walls next door, do you wonder what thing? What, what was that? Thing? I want that massage. Okay. And the, or do you you go look? I, I can I get the back blown out massage? Yeah, I want the backbreaker massage. Mm -hmm, yeah, thick massage, backbreaking. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. I want the the massage with the the uh beating of the palm trees. Yeah, I want a little beating with palm trees and my stuff. Like, what do you go in to offer? Oh yeah, we can do that. Sure. Then, then. Is the is the massage therapist the only ones giving um the extraness? Because again, like if I'm paying you to do stuff to me, do I like do I get up and like and then like is it only men? Do, like do, do, you know what I'm saying? Are you only offering things to men? Are you also offering it to women? So at that point, is everybody bisexual? Like what is going on around here? And how good are the massages? What's bad? The massage or the happy ending? I just feel like whoever was the people who were offered, you know, pleasure for some extra dollars that went and told the police what started this investigation, y'all ain't shit. Y'all now that's the that's the definition of snitching. That's the definition. Of, if you like to me, this is this is like the tax places. First of all, there no. Mm -mm. Ain't nobody at time to bail you out of the because you you're gonna get arrested. And I'm like, damn it, you, you, no. But let me know. Anyway, but it's, stop. Mm -mm. Um, it remind me of people who go to tax places and the tax people be like, I can hook you up for an extra whatever. You can just say no, thank you, and keep it pushing. You don't have to snitch on no day. I'm like, y'all are y'all are snitching on sex slaves. You can't. I mean, if you if you want to give up your cooch, give up your cooch. I I don't care. It ain't on me at all. Um, speaking of keeping things real, so I look, I saw this and I said, is this real? I think it's real. And first, you these are. I feel like these are questions we've already discussed before. Um, I saw this post and I feel like, you know, when people pass away, when people pass away, I feel like 
is the funeral the right place to call people fake? You know what I'm saying? Does, does, is this the time to get up on the microphone and say, I'm going to call all you bitches out? Well, at this person's funeral, old girl got up and said, I'm going to do one for my girl. Listen up. I want to first say, I'm a is she in a snowsuit? I, is that a snowsuit, y'all? I'm going to need a rule breaker. I'm going to need a little bit over one minute. And I apologize to anybody behind me. My name is Mimi. Most of you who don't know me, for 11 years, I was in a relationship with her favorite cousin, Mona Lisa. Um, now, what the fuck did that got to do with anybody? Y'all don't know me. No one know me, but I was in a relationship with her, with her cousin. Okay. Vina is my A1, my diary, my best friend, the sister she never had. Um, I was honored to give her two godchildren and um, to know her is to love her. <laughs> and to know she was very irritated. <laughs> <laughs> Who wore a snowsuit to a funeral? Even if it was cold outside, cause cause my dad my daddy died in February. It was cold, it was cold in February. It was cold, and I had on UGG boots and a sweater. But I didn't want no snowsuit. And I know for a fact she would want me to get up here and say everything I'm about to say. And for all the elders in this room, I want y'all to forgive me because I got a big heart, and this how much I love her. This how you knew she was gonna be cussing. Cause when you tell your elders. Look, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. That means you finna say some cuss words. Half of y'all in here, she ain't fuck with. No, she ain't. Not a snowsuit with heels. Child. This it's the snowsuit with the heels for me. It's a snowsuit with the heels. And child, look at the pastor. Like, now did she sit in front of me and She sit in front of me and Oh Lord. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but y'all real life played on her top when she was alive. So for y'all to come in here and give fake, fake love, it's mind blowing. But I'm gonna let y'all have this for today because it's about her. It's about her, you know. I'm gonna let y'all have it. But it's man, this is the say this in the parking lot at the repass. It's the respect, but just know. All of it. It never go unnoticed. Ma'am, she did. Now, my thing is, you know, I understand feeling like y'all ain't really like her and feeling like y'all being fake. But I'm like, ma'am, she already did. She see it from above any damn way. Check them in the in, in, in the parking lot at the repast. But I do feel like when people get up on the mic, when you get up on the mic in the church, okay, in front of God and the dead person right there, that's rude and kind of crazy to me. Because well, well, first of all, first of all, um, you do want your real ones to stand up for you. But I feel like at this point, man, fuck, I'm dead. Fuck the people. Y'all tried to bully her. Y'all tried to treat her like she was less than. Was she gay? Cause that they be bullying gay people. When she got a heart of gold, yeah. and she didn't get a shirt off her back for yeah. anybody, yeah. Yeah. and she ain't deserve that. Yeah. And later on, I'ma show my ass if y'all know me. But thank you. Not hey, did you police? See, see, call call the police. <laughs> call the police. <laughs> because, again, I uh, my thing is, did anybody say this while she was alive? When folk was playing her, playing her face, which was, did anybody check the same people while she was, don't look, don't come to my funeral trying to cause drama. Then don't do it. Don't. If anybody I ain't what is there, they people know I ain't fuck with them. It it'd be a it'd be a row of people who nobody talked to because I ain't fuck with them. 
And I feel like when folk, now this is my thing as well. I feel like a, a, a thing that could be said, like y'all up here acting like y'all loves her. No, come up here and say, you know, I'm sorry for how I treated her while she was here. But I don't, don't why you, why get up and threaten the people, threaten the people who still sitting right? I'm like, child. <laughs> Because who next? What can you say next? I want to first say I'm going to be the rule breaker and I'm going to need a little bit over one minute. And I apologize to anybody behind me. My name is Mimi. Most of you who don't know me, for 11 years I was in a relationship with her favorite cousin, Mona Lisa. So was you not with Mona Lisa no more? Um... Vina is my A1, my diary, my best friend. Hey, Vina, rest in peace. The sister she never had. Um, I was honored to give her two godchildren. And um is the god kids there? To know her is to love her. We love her. <laughs> and to know she was very irritated. <laughs> <laughs> and I know for a fact she would want me to get up here and say everything I'm about to say. And for all the elders in this room, I want y'all to forgive me because I got a big heart and it's how much I love her. Half of y'all in here, she ain't fuck with. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but y'all real life played on her top when she was alive. So for y'all to come in here and give fake, fake love, it's mind blowing. But I'm gonna let y'all have this for today because it's about her. It's the respect. But just know. All of it, it never go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Y'all try to bully her. Mm -hmm. Y'all try to treat her like she was less than it. When she got a heart of gold. Yeah. And she didn't get a shirt off her back for yeah. anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And she ain't deserve that. Yeah. And later on, I'm going to show my ass if y'all know me. But thank you. It's the, it's the I'm going to show my ass. Uh, Thank you, uh, Missy, for the cash app. You know, I told this mother I was gonna be late to my mom's funeral. Uh, <laughs> you know, look, I completely understand not wanting people to be fake at funerals. I also feel like, child, I'm not. I don't pay much attention, and if I see somebody at a funeral where I can control shit, you gonna get put out. Like I don't, I don't, you you won't even catch me on the mic cussing y'all. You won't be there. Okay, because nah, uh uh, uh um Usher, man, yeah. Uh fifth row, third, the pink shirt with the bad wig. Yeah, they gotta go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, they put them out. Put them out. Period. Don't want you here, ain't gotta be here. I get out of my face, leave. Okay, I would not be the one to get up and say, you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm show my ass later on. Mm -mm. I'm going to put you out from the beginning. Now, to me, it sounds like there was really close friends or whatever and whatnot, and fuck was around there, but maybe because said person dead, they now feel bad. For how they treat her. My thing is, sp speak up for me and, and my life. Don't wait till I'm dead to check folk. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say from the beginning, you need to leave. You don't need to be here. Not cuss out your sister. <laughs> you know, Everybody has a right to, you know, because for me, I'm, for me, I don't, I don't allow people who I don't rock with in my circle, no way. So people who we ain't on good terms, they not going to show up, no way, because they know we don't, we don't, we don't do that. However, I also feel like people who were at odds when somebody was uh, alive, Sometimes when they die, you come out of respect because you knew, damn, I wish I had, you know, this saving time. But my only thing is, 
You should not end your speech in, I'm going to show my ass. Like, why are you going to do that? Now, see, Crocker going to say something at the door. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's my thing. Hey, Bestie, at the door, things would be said. You don't, you can't have no seat. You can't sit down. You can't sit down. You can't come in here. Get out. You know, that's what's going to happen. Now, if it gets to the point where I have to speak up on the mic and say something, that just means, oh, y'all ain't listen. When the when the usher asks you in the fifth row, third, with the bad weave and the, and the pink hat or whatever, and you chose not to leave, that's when somebody going to get up and say, you fake bitch. <laughs> Um, Jay didn't get you a crotch 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 with Jay. Jay ain't even fuck with you. So what you here for? That's what crotch was. <laughs> and she was saying this in the in the quietest, nicest voice. She don't even fuck with you. So why are you here? It'll be hilarious. It'll be hilarious. Okay, but I'm checking people at the door. I'm not waiting for. The, you know, who want to come up and say something real fast about Jay Lee or about, you know, no. I'm at, at the door. At the door. Okay. Don't show your face around here. Get the fuck out. Okay. But she told y'all in her snowsuit, her heels, that, you know what I'm saying? She going to come shit up later. And I'm like, Lord, fix it. Um, what, what, what I felt like it was one more ridiculous thing before we got to Diddy and them. Um, we did House of... Oh, I... Well, well... Did I have it? Maybe I didn't. I don't think I saved it. Y'all, I be having so much stuff around here that save and unsave that I don't be don't, I don't be doing. Um, Mike, Ladies and gentlemen... Damn it. I ain't gonna sound like it. Uh, Mike Tyson is ending his hot boxing podcast. Okay. He be, he be talking and smoking weed or whatever. Um, Mike... He can retire. We'll let you be. Um, if you do watch Raising Canaan, which comes on Stars as one of 50 Cent's shows, even though season three just ended, um, even the even though they're shooting season four right now, they've already been greenlit for season five. Now, I feel like for them to get a season five and they cancel Ghost, that kind of make me mad or whatever. But, you know, I like the Canaan show. I, I do. I'm still mad at him for him trying to call shit with Dre. I'm going to leave that be. And y'all know we love us some Uncle Lou or whatever. Um, You know, Malcolm A. So that man cute. But again, season five, four, Raising Canaan. Um, it was one other thing, but I may be tripping. But let's get to Puffy and them, y'all. So take one little second and um like the video. some old video of, of Bishop Robbery dancing and update my thing. But I don't feel like going through all of those stuff <laughs> find him, him, him dancing like a fool. Um, let's get into these people here. I want to start 
Well, I'm a, I forgot about Jeezy and them. Wait a minute. I'll be forgetting. Uh, G, y'all know Jeezy and Jeannie Mai are still going through the going through their divorce. And Jeezy had talked about a week or so ago that he was asking the judge to seal their divorce stuff. And Jeannie Mai was like, "For what? For why? How and why? Leave it all open." Now I feel like is it a reason either of them wants what they want? Like. It is like, why does he want stuff sealed? Like, is that the, this is it a secret that he don't want us to know? Also, for Jeannie Mai, like, why does she not want things sealed? Like, what do you want to expose about Jeezy? I feel like for them to have had kind of a quiet life, sort of, kind of, both of them are being loud to me. Um, Even him asking for things to be sealed. I feel like y'all weren't married for that long. So that's one thing. I feel like child support should be easy, you know, because hopefully ain't no issue there. Uh, but it, I, I feel like are you, I don't I don't understand why I feel like what one wants the other one wants the opposite. And I'm like, who wants more attention? Does Jeannie Mai want to come off as you know the scorned you know wife of Jeezy who he's treating so unfairly? Does Jeezy want to come off as I just want to live a quiet life? I want, you know, I don't want to be in the spotlight or whatever. And she's the one who wants the attention. I, I, I don't get it. You know, it's it's almost like, would y'all just get divorced? Elite, because sometimes like if y'all the divorce and don't say shit, we will. For, I I forgot they were divorcing. So it's like when when they go in and file motions to change stuff, that reminds people, oh, they divorcing and he wants it to be quiet. What's there to hide? So I feel like just divorce and leave, leave us alone. Um, I want to go with let's do, no, let's do Teddy and them first. So I don't know if any of y'all watch or if y'all did watch the Housewife of Beverly Hills. Back when Teddy Mellencamp was on there. Now, y'all watch, you know, uh, Alex, you know, Alex Rogers. And when he was at BravoCon, when he asked Kyle about why she tried to force Teddy onto people, trying to make Teddy be someone we that we like or whatever. And she was upset. A part of me felt like it was hilarious um, because they brought it up at the reunion. Now, I don't know who she is. Now, when I posted on Twitter, I'm like, don't nobody care about Teddy Mellencamp? And someone said her dad is a famous rocker or rock star. So the same way that people know people know Blue Ivy, there are people who know her. And I said, bitch, I don't know her. I don't at all. And I also feel like the the the, the kids of famous people, you not Blue Ivy. Get out my face. But she is on a podcast, her and Tamara from Tamara's from out the house of OC. And for some reason, these white women mm -hmm. were talking about the Housewives of Potomac. And they were asking, you know, who should come, who should go. And they were discussing Wendy. I need her to be paused. Yeah. I, I I can't help it. I'm really trying to get on board. Or just with gone. Wendy. Like by paused, I mean bye. 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 Nice. Now I feel like not to not to pull a race car or not to feel like you know white women can have opinions on black women, but they can't. I feel like when we have these women from from other housewife shows who only discuss housewife shows, I get that's their niche or whatever. But it's just something about when white women try to say, we well, yeah, she should be fired. It's like, you not even on your show. You were put off of the Beverly Hills show because you were nobody. You were a non-motherfucking factor. You are somebody who no one wants on the show except Kyle. You may be friends with other women, but you are a boring rich, I think she's rich, white woman who nobody who watches Potomac 
or who like supports Wendy, like really likes you or know you in that capacity. And I felt like even the way she said it was like, oh, you know, she go. I can't get into that and blah, blah, blah. So when Wendy, you know, got wind of what was said, Wendy was like, oh, okay, bitch. Wendy went and posted their text, not text. She posted the DMs that Teddy sent her, uh, one in March of 23 and another one in, I believe, November 23, basically asking Wendy to come onto the podcast. And her point was, bitch, you in my DMs that I did not respond to. You are in my DMs asking me to come on to your show. But you want me to believe that I should be fired? And I said, first of all, I want to show because I want to make it a better, a better screen. So this is what Wendy had posted. And you see her back in, again, back in. Well, for, first of all, in October of 22, Teddy mentioned um, Wendy, her story. And then one in March of 23, Dr. Wendy, hope you're well. Your reunion performance should def be taught in Housewives 101. Would you be able to come to the podcast um, with me and Tamara next Tuesday? Blah, 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 to chat with you, okay? That was March, they replied. Then in November of last year, just bump into your husband walking down the hall. Come on the pod today. We have a suite. We are podcasting from at Four Seasons. So again, you're asking me to be on your podcast, bitch. So you can't do that and then want to make it seem like, oh, I don't, you know, you're nobody. And her point was, you know, I got it, Teddy. You just wanted my attention. Hi, Karen. Now, Wendy calling Teddy Benicamp or Karen, it, it gagged me because I do feel Karen-like tendencies from Teddy. Now, again, I don't know Teddy at all. Um, I only know that I've seen from the time she was on Housewives, no one liked her. She was a horrible housewife, and she was in the let she was let go. Uh, and she, to me, she does give up a caring likeness to her. So she responded saying, "Got what? That I wanted you on our podcast before watching this season. Notice that's when the DM stopped. You you would think with four degrees you could come up with something more original than Karen. And I was like, bitch. First of all, fuck you. Okay. Um. Again, there's something about. I don't like it. First of all, you spoke on her and she responded. Her point was you were asked, you you doubled asked me to come on and I and I did not respond. So don't make it seem as if you stopped wanting me on there because y'all talk about housewives. To me also, I do think, you know, let's talk about the housewives because that can get more attention on our, on our on our shit. So, um I hope Wendy talks about her <laughs> on her own podcast because Wendy has her own podcast on YouTube. And we there comes a time where I feel like just sometimes Caucasian people just need to shut up. I feel like sometimes the way they speak about us to us and reference us comes off rude and nasty and that's what i felt when teddy when teddy said it like oh because my thing is and i think they had mentioned something about you know what can is being gone when he should be gone too and i was like why i don't get it i feel like for the past couple of seasons on the show most people are trying to defend themselves against giselle and or robin and that and that and that so I do feel like this season, with the next season, with Robin being gone, with Candace choosing to leave, Wendy should stay. If they kept Robin on for all those years who gave nothing, not no wine, not no nothing, if if Robin has had years to entertain us and did not, Giselle will still be on the show. I don't feel like it's fair for folks to say, get rid of Wendy. I feel like Wendy deserves at least one more season to see what happens. I feel like getting rid of Robin 
Candace choosing to leave. They need to get rid of Ashley. That can help the group grow. We know Mia will be back. We know that Karen will be back. We know that Giselle will be back, okay? But I feel like Wendy should come on for one more season. And saying to pause, Wendy, to me, did not make any sense. Because it wasn't as if Wendy had a bad season. To me, production is making the show bad. But I like that Wendy said, nah, bitch, you would not play on my face. You would not play as if you felt like you could tell me to leave. Bitch, you want him in your show. Y'all don't like y'all don't like Wendy. Now Wendy can go too. So I want her to stay. I want Wendy to stay for one more season. I feel like with Robin gone and Candace gone, I feel like she should be able to bring more. And if she can't, then she should be let go. Until they get rid of Giselle, anybody should come can come on that show and do nothing. Giselle does nothing at all. Okay, Mia gonna bring the mess. Mia will bring the mess. They need to bring back bring back a scholar. But that's just on me. Um, let's jump to Portia. Lastly, will be Diddy. Child, Portia, did I empty everything out? Let me see. I'm gonna empty stuff out so I can be sure I can see stuff. Uh, Portia around here and don't Port child, Portia married a Nigerian scammer. If you ask me. Portia don't know who she married. Portia literally married a Nigerian stranger, and that's on her. Um, so when Portia filed for divorce, initially they were saying Portia filing for divorce had nothing to do with um the stuff coming out about Simon, him scamming and scheming, him lying about his his documents or whatever his uh, deportation status and all this stuff. They were saying at first, that, oh, that's not what it was. There had been other issues that, you know, was building up to her filing for divorce. Well, now the court documents that were obtained, I think by, um, who got them? Got them? Let me see. I don't know about somebody. Um, Portia is admitting that, well, no, the reason I chose to file for divorce is because Simon, you know, was out here lying. Okay, I found out these scheming, scamming, and stuff, and I didn't want to know more. And so as it was per or per, per radar online, who got so I need to find out. I really need to just go ahead and invest in getting court documents, but I don't want to spend unnecessary money. I need to find out where can I get all the stuff from and just get it. Okay. Um, but again, it says, according to court documents obtained by Radar Online, Portia claims she had no knowledge of his sketchy past and that once she learned about, the, you know, him and when he, you know, when he was accused of whatever, uh, that ruined her perception of their marriage. And this is my thing. Portia is to, look. Portia is her own worst enemy. Portia allowed herself to not listen to all the red flags that folk kept flashing her way. She chose to ignore people saying, slow down, little red Corvette. And I'm not saying it's Portia's fault that Simon lied to her. I am saying, had she just paused for a second, had she not tried to be above looking like the woman who stole somebody else's husband, I feel like if she was not in defense mode of her own actions, she would have not been blinded by Simon's, you know, misinformation. Okay. Um, it also said, by the way, a further response. The media frenzy that ensured that ensued was solely a result of husband's actions, which included revelations of husband's criminal criminal history, uh, questionable immigration status, and allegations of fraud. Um, wife, meaning Portia, wife showed that the news reports of husband's alleged immigration fraud and what appeared to be an, Im an imminent threat of deportation were shocking and affected the wife's mental and emotional well-being. Um, none of this information was ever disclosed by the husband to the wife, despite wife having previously inquired about the husband's immigration status 
and criminal history. My thing is, why did you not do a background check? I feel like when you when you are about to marry somebody, like I I do feel like everybody should do a background check of some sort. Especially, look, I hope this doesn't sound like wrong or whatever. I do feel like if you are marrying somebody from it who who was from another country, I do feel like do a high key, you know deep dive background check to be sure that not only do they not have shit going on here, but what they have in other countries. Okay. I I feel like dating dating is hard because you have to trust the person is not an egotistical maniac killer who killed 18 people in a different state and you don't know. So I feel like Portia was so quick to not want to look like a home wrecking whore. That's full thought. That she chose to disbelieve Simon. To me, Portia reverted back to her her with Cordell. My man, my man, my man. I believe my man. I believe my man. In the same way, Cordell surprised Portia. With her with, with divorcing her, Simon surprised Portia with his past. Now, again, I told y'all when Simon was lying, scheming, scamming, Portia wasn't even born yet. Okay, because Simon's stuff all happened um back when Portia was back in like the early 80s. Portia wasn't born yet, or she was like one or two years old. So Portia may not have even thought, well, not before I was born, back, back when you were 18, what have you been accused of that? You know what I'm saying? Now for me. I feel like you have to have those kind of conversations. But to me, Simon showed his bitch assness when he was divorcing Fallon. But people then got so caught up on what Fallon was fucking around with Jalen and then Fallon was pregnant by Jalen. Oh, then Fallon's a bad person. My thing is, hell, we now know Fallon, Fallon was probably putting up a bullshit with Simon. Period. So Portia now saying, well, yeah, because they came out, you know, that he was his his immigration status, he could probably be just deep deported. He had a criminal history, how he technically up allegedly falsified documents, you know what I'm saying, all these things. I'm like, Portia, so your your lawyers didn't look up shit with him. Now, the question is this. If Portia asked him verbatim, is there any criminal shit in your past? And if he said no, okay, he did lie. However, background check. Background check. I feel like if, you know, dating, there's nothing wrong with someone saying, I just, I just want to run a back, especially before marriage. Once we, once we, if I don't know you and you could be, I need to know some things before I marry you, before, just, just some things. What happened? You know what I'm saying? The fact that Portia was his fifth wife. Had you talked to any of the other wives? That's why I, said, I posted on Twitter. I said, when, when Portia filed for divorce, I said, I want to have Portia called Fallon. Because at the end of the day, your best bet is to ask the ex-wives what they went through. But Portia was so gung-ho to not be the blame for Simon and Fallon divorcing that she chose to ignore any red flag he could have had because to her, I didn't I didn't break up their marriage. I didn't chalk up say as we say say as we key all those weddings to be Ex-wife number five in less than two years. But this is the thing. This is the thing, I think. If Portia would have paid the right people to look into Simon's past, they would have found some discrepancies. They may not have, they may not have found everything 
But this is my thing. You think you think Oprah would not Oprah. <laughs> you think any rich, any rich person, any famous person dating someone, if you really want to know things, there are people you go, go get a love your pope. You don't get a regular, you know, PI. No, you pay for the best of the best. If I'm in that tax bracket, if I'm if I know this man is I'm wife number four, he is not from here. It was a, a messy breakup from the last girl. Because let's be honest, when Portia met Simon, who was married to Fallon, Portia at that point in time was, was still with Dennis. Okay. It was messy from the beginning. From the beginning. So when you are in that kind of realm of tax bracketing, uh, TV showing, at that time, Portia was all over in this and that. She was that girl at that point in time when she got with Simon. She should have had somebody on her on her payroll. Portia, deep dive that man. Deep dive that man to find out the basics. Because somewhere, the fact that, the fact that before Portia and that man got married, he had already applied for... I think citizenship, it was denied. That would have came up. That would have came up. Little stuff would have came up because stuff had already happened before they got married. So to me, Portia is now trying to make it seem like, well, I was deceived. And, you know, once... Because, again, it says, let me see. Um, her lawyer wrote, since learning of husband checker immigration history and status, wife began to question everything that she initially believed to be true as it relates to her husband's character, immigration, business dealings, etc., and began to uncover additional information the husband failed to disclose to the wife. Uh, petitioner did not wish to remain married to the stranger and file for the wife. I, there is strange in my house. Took a while to figure. Took a while to figure out. You can't be who you say you are. You can't be him because he would not touch me like that, and he would not treat me how you do. He would adore me. He would not ignore me. Okay, so I am convinced there's a stranger in my house. Okay, however, whatever. Uh, but again, you didn't know that man that long. That's something else. You did not know that man that long. He 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 he's he not he was he's all he, you married a stranger. Simon was a stranger from the get go. <laughs> you did not know that man. All of this proves you did not know him. These did he lie and, and scheme? Yeah, he did. You know, he did. There are things that he did not tell her for sure. However, she also chose to not deep dive and look. Okay. Now, a text that she sent to him is also in the paper. And it said, this is their text of the assignment. There are more than one or two reasons we are in this place. And I'm forced to make this decision. Portia said, said in a text to Simon. I will make sure that, wait, I will make sure they are, not they, I will make sure they are written and listed for you to see. There is nothing in this world that would have told me I would have to divorce you or that I would even contemplate leaving you even for a day. However, what has been what is between us rocks our foundation to the core. I've always trusted you from day one. That's the problem. That's the problem. You can't trust no stranger from day one. I don't know you. Okay. I don't know you. So her saying, I, tr I don't trust nobody from day one. Nobody. There's one body I trust. And with that body, I do things freely. However, I'm not marrying that no <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say, I, I trusted you from day one. You didn't know him from day one. Okay. Uh, I have always trusted you from day one when I took your hand and started on this journey. I've always stressed to you that I feel safe with you and how important for someone like, like me that is. I've also loved you through and through. But all you, well, wait, but all of this shows me you have not cared for me the same. And that is a huge problem. Your job is to protect PJ and I, and you have not. You didn't protect you and PJ. Because you allow somebody to make you think they were the end all be all. However, how can you believe a man is your protection when the other woman he was married to, who, who he had been the father figure to her three children, that as soon as they broke up, it was fuck her, fuck them kids. I always say, pay attention to how men treat women they used to be with, okay? People I know who, you know, have kids or whatever, and I am able to understand how they treat women they used to be with, even if, you know what I'm saying, um, the, the, all they do is respectfully choose to not really deal with them it's in a respectful way. I will hear your, your point out or whatever, but, but, but fine, fine, fine. You know, you have to be sure the person is not being disrespectful or they are, you know, just this, this, this being dicks to people. You know, and Portia had a front row seat seeing how Simon and, and Fallon or going through whatever, and before that marriage was before that marriage was fully over, Portia was already sitting in the wife seat. Portia had no problem sitting in Fallon's recently vacated seat, and when Simon would post little shady shit towards Fallon, Portia never to me said, "No, nah, don't do that. Let it be about me and you." Portia to me participated in the bullshit. To prove I'm not a homewrecker. Even though Fallon did get pregnant <laughs> by Jalen, you know, in the end of her marriage to, 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 to Simon, I still feel like, so what? So what? Because now we see how the kind of person that Simon is. And to me, Fallon and Jalen, once it all came out, they were like, well, yeah, we were, you know, we were, we were stuck around. We were, we were, you know, because Simon and, and, and Simon and Fallon were, you know, over. But Portia, my thing is, we never really saw Fallon try to um, shame Simon. Fallon point was, well, damn, Portia. Well, damn, Portia. Because they were engaged. So the same, both, both of them an engagement and a pregnancy happening fast, fast, fast. But Portia still pushed this, and she did not know that man at all. And now she looks stupid. All because I trusted somebody I did not know. But I do, I blame Portia. I do. I don't think she's a victim. I don't think that I don't I don't feel like Portia was hoodwinked or bamboozled. I feel like Portia saw a man who said, I'm finna be single. I'm finna be single. Um, I got money. You single. And let's do it. And she okay. The same way with Dennis, which because she said and her her and Dennis was hanging out, having fun, or whatever, whatever. And she got pregnant, and then they were a couple. So I feel like, girl, you can't, you know, if Simon the POS he is, yeah, he is. Simon to me, you know, with Portia being wife number five, and I, I, I feel like he even probably played Fallon, in my opinion. I thought he played Fallon, and Fallon. 
I believe was younger than Portia. How old is Fallon Pina? How old is Fallon? I don't even say. I don't even, I can't even see how old she is, child. Oh, I think it's, I think she's 34. I think she's 34. I think. Yeah, because Jalen was 23. It says she's 34. Now, how old is Portia? Oh, it's Portia. 42. So Fallon is younger than Portia. Meaning when Fallon got with Simon, she was in her 20s. And Portia got with, with Simon at 40 years old. So technically, both of y'all was bullying that little girl. <laughs> both of y'all was bullying Fallon and she was young and stupid. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like who knows what Simon got over on Fallon. And thank God Fallon had no kid. Girl, Portia, child, that's on you, honey. But let it be. And, you know, as much as people want to act like, oh, well, Portia, no. Mm -mm. Now, Simon around here being messy and petty, absconding to another country for work. Stale narrative because folks keep on saying that he's you know right here is you know stealing and, and dealing across the country. Um, si wh whoever gets with Simon next, because now Simon's way of doing things and how things end with his women, like okay, is is common knowledge. Okay, you get with him, you live a good life for a year, year and a half, maybe two years or whatever, and then it's over. Okay, he's gonna be messy on social media, and he because in the he was messy with Fallon because of Portia, because of the housewife and all that shit. And now he just he's just as messy with Lee with him and Portia. Yes, when she was on uh on Tamron Hall, and Tamron uh, Hall was like, uh, ma'am, what's going on? And Portia tried to act like, when Portia tried to act like, oh my God, you know, I cannot believe how, you know, me, she, at one point Portia said she felt like Tamron Hall was being like a mean girl. Trying to, but I'm like, you now see people saw the forest, the trees, the rain, the sand, the, 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 the ship come through the water. They saw it coming. And they were just saying things like, you know, warning, warning, warning. Abort, abort, abort. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Yes. Talk that man, because before, I told y'all, Simon Gubadia as Portia's husband and Simon Gubadia as felt two different people. Portia got that man teeth done. Simon lost the weight. He learned how to face tune. He, you know, post, 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 got his engagement up. He won getting with Portia. The attention, he got attention from being with Portia. And now, because they're divorcing, he's now using that as engage, engagement as well. Because not all eyes on him. But to me, he always wanted to be because Fallon said, that, I, I believe Fallon said that Simon was the one who said, you should go on Housewives. And now, Portia, you're going to have your story. Period. So, child, vet who you fucking. Period. Okay. Uh, let's get to the, the, the diddy part. Okay. Child, first of all, I was like, what is pink? Cocaina. The, the little rod dude who was suing Diddy for 30 mil, you know, for SA, the law for the blah, blah, bloop, who has been telling on eight, she was good and Junior touched me, and that person touched me, you know, young Miami cousin touched me. Now the lawsuits say 
that did not, we already know that Diddy, what, because I have it, Travis, let me see, do I have it? Do I have it? The look, the, the dude who they arrested as his mule right here, you know, because the people had the footage showing this. So when we were saying that, when they were saying Diddy plane was somewhere in the Ruba, no, no, Antigua, no, Diddy was at an airport in Florida. Okay, that's where the drug, the, the alleged drug mule, the, the young man, was arrested. They was at, they was all at the airport because allegedly they said, because, you know, spring break is coming up. And there was in the Diddy and all of them was going on a trip for spring break. And so, when, you know, one white dude, if, when, when I saw folks say, what's the drug? What's the drug? I said, you don't know what a drug mule is? So if y'all do not know what a drug M-U-L-E is, it just means the same way a mule is used to carry things from point A to point B, it's the same thing, okay? Most celebrities do not carry their own stuff on them. They have somebody else who has it. If you remember a long time ago when Justin Bieber was hanging around black people, okay? or whatever. And Lil Twist back then ended up going to jail for, you know, drugs or whatever. And it was because he was the person who Justin Bieber allegedly would know. Lil Twist said it. Lil Twist said how he took the fall back then because Justin Bieber was a bigger star. But some celebrities who dibble and dabble in, 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 in the stuff has somebody who, who 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 carries it around for them, so that if something happens, the celebrity doesn't get charged. You know, you get charged, and then I'll pay your bills, and I'll do that, and I'll do this because you won't do that much time. Okay, the same way they say Puff, you know, had Shine do some time for him. Okay, the same way. They because you know when that that pow pow happened back in the day, people kept saying, Okay, we all felt shine ain't do shit. Puff did and puff had shine. Take the rap. Because the famous person ain't the one to take the rap. It'd be the people around them. So now they're saying in this in this new in this new lawsuits, okay. I was like, child, all the stuff. They're alleging. Let me see if I can find the one that actually has the little papers with it, because it's it so much. It's so much. It's so much. Okay, yeah, right here. Uh, Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have the hundred the hundred dollar bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do cocaine with young with young Miami. Then it says Robin Greenhill, the accountant, would ensure the wiring funds transfer or cash payments to SEX workers. Okay. Frankie, somebody, Moy, somebody, Brendan, somebody, and KK would also be responsible for ensuring payment to the SEX workers in cash. Young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs SEX workers and receive payment via wire transfer from Robin, which outlined defendants ongoing criminal organizations. So they like <laughs> they all doing stuff. Everybody, everybody going to jail. Everybody. Everybody. And the, the crazy getcha gotcha is Because a lot of people feel like, like even hearing Usher speak on Howard Stern years ago, a couple years ago, and when we asked about when he was 13 years old and he went to live with Puffy, he went to live with Puffy for a year, how he seen stuff, he seen stuff, you know, that he did not know how to, you know, explain back then. And when they asked him, would you allow your child, your 13-year-old, your kid, you know, to go live with Puffy for a year? And he's like, hell no. Nah. 
because it was inappropriate. And then I think allegedly, like no one knew what was going on. And when his mom found out this, the adult things that was going on around Usher, she at that that's when his mom became his like his manager and stayed that man stayed his, his manager until he was in his 30s. Because she found out, oh, you know, because you know, I feel like back in the day, you no one knew what was going on in the you know in the upper echelon rooms of, of famous people. You don't know, but once you do, you are supposed to take heed and remove your. So when, when the mom of child, my son ain't never went back to hang out with Usher. I'm sorry, my. T- I went back to hang with Puff. Now, Torrey, who we know Torrey is a uh, reporter, a journalist or whatever. He is, to me, everyone should remember him from his R. Kelly interview years ago when he asked R. R. Kelly, do you like teenage women? And R. Kelly said, "You when you say teenage, what, what you mean? Nigga, teenage. Any age of teen. Okay. So that's why I will always remember him from he was talking. Child. I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay. I, I I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this. Because y'all know back in the day, people were saying friends. Hey, friends back in the day. It might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I and he said yes. And they were flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? They wouldn't yeah. say. And years later... They finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh-huh. And the internship ended. I said, oh. Now, this, again, is the get you. Because a lot of folks are saying, child, come out. <laughs> Fine work. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of people have been saying, why is everyone now saying things? Because 10 years ago, no one spoke out about Puffy. Now that Puffy is not as powerful as he used to be, people feel more free to tell their Diddy story. I always say people don't understand. Usually the first person to speak out that is a backlash. People like to go after the person exposing somebody for their bad behavior versus saying, well, damn, don't do the bad behavior. Now, also, but beside that, Tanika. Okay, remember y'all, Tanika Ray, who to me is an amazing host. You know what I'm saying? We've seen her over the years or whatever. She came out. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it. But it's, since then I've been like, yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. (laughs) There's, I have a lot of stories, y'all. I've been in Hollywood for 25 years, maybe longer, 30. I got a lot of stories. Unfortunately, um, maybe I'll write a book one day, but it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood and nobody wants to live there. So for those of you like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. We want to be happy. And we really want to forget the trauma. So, so. And then her, I'm her pace to see what her actual... Have a family. So her actual caption says, oh yeah, women hold a lot in, hold a lot in order to function every day in a man's world. Unfortunately, we can comp- comp- mentalization. 
out pain and carry on. When you laugh, the de- experience is a lesson that move, move differently. Um, if I told my story in 1996, then what? In 1996, where misogyny and male rappers and male people were ruling the world, okay? Um, it would have ruined her career, in my opinion, because we've heard stories of other people speaking out and being shunned and being blackballed and being black and all that stuff. So if you were being her, you know how many women were probably harassed and as things happened to them back then or whatever, and they just could not say shit. I mean, just fact. Okay, just fact. So I feel like her just admitting like, you know, yeah, I was also through shit and couldn't say shit then, and I don't want to say shit now. You know, and sometimes I, it, it, it takes one person to say, this is what happened to me that gives other people the strength to say, this is what happened to me. Because at the end of the day, we know something happened with Cassie. We know something happened with Cassie. That's why he settled. That's why other people came out and said, well, I, I saw it too with Cassie. So I'm like, Diddy, you know, there had been rumors about Diddy for years. And so slowly but surely, as we now see other journalists, other people are just speaking out. Now, I saw Tyrese, you know, what about the children? It's like, there's so much shit coming across our timelines that we just don't care anymore. We don't care. So I don't want anyone to confuse me for, I mean, last night before I went to sleep, I was praying. I found myself praying for Diddy's kids. I was thinking about Justin and Christian Combs and thinking about the twins who go to school with my daughter. Um, they, my daughter and his twins have been at pretty much every birthday party. And then I'm just thinking to myself, see, a lot of people will go after Diddy, beat him down for whatever he's either did or being accused of, uh, allegedly. Uh, and, and then it's all about him. Right. And I was thinking about the family. I was thinking about the kids. I was thinking now. And this is my issue. I feel like. Was Diddy thinking about his children while having free golf parties? Was Diddy thinking about the parents of women who he allegedly abused? So when people come out and say, what about their children? I feel like when adults do fucked up shit, it's your fault that your kids are now also attached to what you did because you did stuff. Allegedly. So I, it, it angers me when people try to make it seem like people who are talking about and having conversations about Diddy and what Diddy did, trying to make it seem as if y'all saying fuck his kids. No, Diddy said fuck his kids if he did what he's accused of doing. When we see people on trial for murder and RAPE, and a, so we see folk on trial because they did stuff. They have kids too. But their victims are also someone's child or someone's parent. And I feel like Diddy allegedly has been doing things since before he had all these kids. Diddy has been doing things allegedly since the 90s. Diddy has like a two-year-old kid. Diddy had kids. Diddy, Diddy got Kim Porter pregnant with them twins and got Chance Mama pregnant too. Diddy was, was around here. Diddy is has been known for being a, not a flanderer, but one, 
child not wanting to have any kind of real relationship with any one person. He wanted to stick his penis in whatever he could, he could stick it in, okay? And all the women was just dying with this, just, just like Nick Cannon, where you are a one man fucking with multiple women. And you want the women to accept that you don't want no relationship. And even once he got with Carisha and, you know, he said, y'all not single? No, you are accepting him and the bullshit. So whenever you see, because I, child, I saw so many, even Slim Thug was like, oh, why, what about the kids? Fuck them kids. Did he say, fuck them kids first? Because he is the one who allegedly did these things. But because he felt like, allegedly, he would not get caught, he thought it don't matter. My kids won't know. So, things you did are coming out publicly. That's your fault. You can't tell people, have sympathy for my children. You didn't. The same way if you are the child of a famous person and you do some dumb shit and folks say, I can't believe, like, I can't believe Blue Ivy around here and, and, and she punched North in the face. I can't believe it. Oh, Blue Ivy is as a, no. When children of famous people do dumb shit that embarrass their parents, that's what, that's what happens. And child, Carisha felt like I'm the next Cassie because Cassie is the is one of the women who did he, you know, dated the longest, was with the longest, um, and you know, was put up on a pedestal the longest while Diddy was also fucking around with Kim Porter, uh, with 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 the with other women. You know what I'm saying it wasn't until until Kim died that Puff. How to slow down. He then got with Carisha. And per the lawsuit, child, per the lawsuit, he had Carisha down there carrying the stuff too. And they said that whatever pink stuff was uh, cocaine and ecstasy like mixed together. And I'm like, who the fuck even think, who would even think to do that? I would never take it. So when you when I, I see folk in the, in the comment section, oh wow, y'all y'all, I ain't said nothing about the man kids. What he did got his house raided and his kids there. That's his fault. That's his fault. That's his and even they don't want Diddy. They want folk bigger than Diddy. They want Diddy too. The feds do not come to your door and raid your house for nothing. Even folks who think this started from Kathy, Kathy's lawsuit, no. It takes them longer than three, four months to put... When when, when did Kathy sue Diddy? Because I, I, I just want to know. Cause was because I can't when y'all was a couple months ago in November. Okay, it's only March, November, December, January, February, March. That's four months ago. They're uh, if it, they don't they be looking at shit longer than four months ago. To me, to me, Cassie knew something was up and said, "Let me sue now," because soon he won't have no money. This lawsuit, I'm sorry, this this investigation to whatever he's into did not start in November. They be the, the child, the feds be watching for a minute and then come and swoop in. They come and swoop in. Okay, that's what happens. Now, when Carisha posted on Twitter the other day, it's gonna be a fun summer. Are you sure? 
Are you sure? That, that's what we'll have the Bishop Robbery watch along will be on Friday. Because I'm off work Friday. So Friday, my live would not be at 9 p.m. It'll be sometime earlier in the day because I'm off Friday. And we're going to get into to, to the Bishop. They were watching the Bishop for, for, for months. For months. The reason the feds, at least in New York, has such a high rate of success is because they're, they are meticulous and they're waiting. They will wait and watch, wait and watch, wait and watch. And they build up a case because they have to have enough, enough uh, information to even get a warrant to raid your house. The fans does not even try to quickly get anybody. If Diddy cared for his children a lot, one, I said, Diddy would have had a house for them kids that didn't have nothing to do with him. He has houses and stuff in his name and his company names or whatever. All of that stuff connects back to him. All of it. Child, he, he swallowed up completely. Completely. People feel like they're untouchable. They feel like they're untouchable. Even, I'm not saying that everything that he's being accused of that he did, I'm saying there's smoke and there's fire. Could some people be making up things? Sure. However, there is smoke and there's fire. And every day, something new come out because the feds are watching. The, to me, this is the kind of attention that Bishop Robbery wants. Because everybody, they mama. Child, the fact that I have to agree with, I don't never like agreeing with, with, uh, with Joe Button. Listen to this. I have no plausible deniability with Homeland at your house. You you did something. And with your private you jet? Did, it's <laughs> dog. It's over for that best case scenario shit you're talking about. There is nothing to say that Puff is on the run, nor has he been charged with anything. So right. we want to be very clear in that. True. But we niggas. So, and we from where we from. Mm -hmm. So we look at this through that, through that lens. And this looks, this is, this is a wrap. Yeah. Not you know only what? is this a wrap, this is about to get much worse. I agree. It is. This is about to get bad, 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 bad. I didn't say that Puff is on the run, nor has he been. And that's the getcha gotcha. When folks up on say, oh, he wasn't arrested. Oh, they don't have a they don't have a warrant for the arrest. The, the, they don't arrest you first. They don't arrest you first. They raid your shit. They get all of which means they already have probable cause to raid not one house, but two in two separate states. And not two. Two houses, two separate states, and caught up with your ass at the airport. Okay. Like Joe Budden said, y'all know we ain't agreeing with Joe Budden. Me do. We ain't agreeing with Joe Budden. He's right. This is the beginning stages of this beginning beginning to get public. When folks were saying before, right after, either right after Cassie lost or whatever, how there was some kind of investigation into Sean Combs, and the fed said, no, we ain't got no investigation. We ain't got no investigation. Because they don't let nobody know nothing. This ain't nothing new. And it, it did not, it did, they did not just start watching him from the Kathy lawsuit. They did not just start investigating him because, oh, somebody said he touched me. No, they've been watching. They've been watching. Been watching. Homeland Security, the feds, 
you know, sex, all that stuff is, I told y'all, this is not the city police. This ain't even the state boys, okay? They did raids in California and Florida. That is two different coasts, two different sides of America, okay? Over there on the on the west coast, and then down there, down south, and you can't tell me they ain't looking at you in, in New York, here and there, and everywhere. If you pull up old videos, old interviews, st stuff always seen to child. If you watch Making the Band, we hated how he treated the people on Making the Band. Half fuck walking across the bridge for cheesecake. He broke up every group, stole money from every group. You know, child, where is it? First, first, I almost forgot. Y'all, we we may hit, we may hit two hours and I can be about forty-five minutes. Uh, where? Boom, Willie. Willie from day twenty-six. They said they found the porns in the house, and the boss was labeled "take that, take that." I was like, man. That <laughs> Hell yeah, he robbed us. And we want our fucking money. God damn it. No, he did rob us though. I ain't bullshitting about the robbery. But hey man, he in a bit of a pickle right now. Daddy. I funny, it's funny, but it's still yeah, I don't know. I don't wanna laugh at no shit while some shit happened, but hey motherfucker say Diddy had got on a jet and got the fuck up out of there. That shit funny as hell to me. I was like, man, you gotta find a surveillance camera, Diddy had dog into that bitch. He robbed everybody. Day 26, um, that in the cane, the band. He I told y'all this it is strange when every artist who was on your label is who had crazy success is broke. Is broke. And the, the common denominator. And them not getting this or that was you. Every artist on in some when when the artists tell y'all in some way he fucked them over. What do y'all think he did to women he wanted? What do y'all think? And we know that uh, um, Misa Hilton. And Kim Porter was fuck. <laughs> and the 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 fact is, Kim Porter and Misa. You know, Misa is uh, Justin's mama, and you know, um, uh, oh, Kim Porter. You know, was just you know, it's, it's y'all know they the mamas of the kids who has been around the longest, and. They are women who I am pretty sure put up with a whole lot. However, because at that time, nobody was coming out and saying shit against Diddy. You think Kim wasn't pissed off when she was pregnant with twins and found out that Chad's mama was pregnant with her at the same time? Seeing Diddy on a boat with Kim Porter one day, on a boat with somebody else on the second day, on a boat with Kathy the third day. You think he wasn't playing child? And at some point, Kim Porter stopped allowing the shit. And that's when Diddy kind of got serious with Cassie. And then Cassie left. And if y'all recall, when Cassie left Diddy, he wasn't happy. It was plenty of, you know, messy shit in the news about, about, how, he, about how he felt when she left. Diddy may have Diddy it, 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 the same way that R. Kelly was a great artist and had amazing music, but was a fucked up individual. The same way we love the Cosby Show, I love Ghost Dad, but Bill Cosby, the person, was not Heathcliff Hustable. Okay, Diddy could be a, an, an amazing producer. In the in the in, in that world, 
However, his antics over the years have always been rumored in the industry. And now is the time where people are saying, I won't be silent no more. And to me, the next person that may speak out may be Misa. Because Kamora went through it with Russell. We love we used to love Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons Dev Russell Simmons Dev Comedy Jam. Um, you know, him at Dev, like people love Russell. Oh, he's the, the, the yoga guy. And then what happened? He round here a villain. A villain. But people don't know to come out. That's why people, people, so I, I know folk get mad at me sometimes, but don't be killing gonna say because you know they don't like whoever. But when I'm but I be like, we come on our rush card. I had one a long time ago. Okay. Um, I will always support people trying to speak up for the little guys. That's 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 gonna be that's it. And do we stick with Amanda Seals, who who was people was pissed at her for speaking about a guy who was being inappropriate with women. Diddy is accused of being inappropriate with women and some men. Okay. Kim can't tell her Kim's gone. And not only that, Kim children don't know what Puff put Kim through. Because when Kim passed away, the girl put the Kim. There is a, a document, no, there's a, a show on, on Netflix. I just I'm I think I'm gonna review it called Homicide and it's it's about five or six stories of cases the police in New York tried um of different murders. And there was a family where a wife and her brother killed the husband for insurance money. And so the wife could like keep hold of the of the son. For 20 years, the the the, the dead person daddy kept fighting to be sure that you know his son's you know wife and brother would be held accountable. And like 20 years after the murder happened, it went to court because you know because of DNA evidence or whatever. And the son, who was at that point an adult, was championing for the mom. Who killed his father? I mean, who, who killed his father? Because again, kids don't be knowing how fucked up the other parent be to the parent. So Diddy is like, I'm this amazing father. I love your mom, but mom gone. And I don't know how much bullshit my father put my mama through because mama never told me because I wasn't old enough. That's the crazy part. So, again, when people say, what about his children? What about them? If he didn't care, why should we? And, again, nobody that I've seen are, like, dragging the kids into it. We're, dis we're discussing what their daddy is accused of. His freak offs. Okay? And now how people around him, because this this going to be the get you gotcha. Once they bring Puff down, anybody who was involved will come down with him. So if Carisha was around here, you know, carrying from state to state, unless she come plea and become the witness, she can get involved. You know what I'm saying? So people need to know, like, this is this is the beginning of it. Puff has not been criminally charged with anything. However, Homeland Security coming to raid your house for they're not doing that looking for stuff for somebody else. 
you will be included in whatever they're doing. Period. Anyway, that's all. That's it. We got two hours in today. <laughs> um, yeah, we will see what happens tomorrow. Um, I will probably be live again. Bishop Robbery Watch Along will be on Friday. Um, because he was live like 45 minutes. I want to leave that to Friday. It'll probably be Friday at around 5. It will not be at 9 p.m. Um, live tomorrow will depend on what comes out tomorrow and stuff. But I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's live chat about stuff. Uh, please be safe around here. Do not let Puppy invite y'all nowhere. Um, <laughs> because who knows what's gonna happen. Um, like the video, comment in the comment section, you know, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Follow me on social media at Debbie Pointer on IG, Twitter, and TikTok. I had a great time with y'all. Y'all, I'm going to go to bed. Go to bed. Hopefully these two will get it figured out. Okay? Um, I got to go. Love y'all.